Good evening. My name is Alexander Hagen. I'm the CEO of a medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. Previously, I was a financial analyst and financial journalist and a research engineer in telecommunications. Tonight, I'd like to speak to you about the Turkish coup and what happened and what it signifies. Uh, I've seen what's going on with the media and YouTube and I haven't been satisfied with what has been brought forth to the public, so I'd like to provide a brief synopsis to separate what we actually really know, what is likely, and what is conjecture. So, uh, unfortunately, after this uh, failed coup, uh, whatever happens, Turkey is now going to be a police state, uh, which is a terrible thing for most Turks. But for it to uh, resume uh, uh, its economy, which has been in a free fall lately after they shot down the Russian jet about a year ago, uh, they will have to appear reasonable. So it will be uh, a police state uh, that is uh, hiding uh, uh, to some degree, playing games so that uh, they can restore favorable economic conditions. It will be interesting to see how this deeply divided nation shifts. Uh, Turkey, so first we have to have the background, and you have to, you can look at Wikipedia to take a look at this, um, and just take a look at the Wikipedia article, which I'm going to keep on screen while I uh, give you some basic background. Uh, so, um, Turkey has four or so main ideological power bases. On the right, there are the ultra-nationalists. Uh, these are uh, a group that uh, the, the most extreme form is called the Grey Wolves. Uh, these are people that are very hardcore about uh, uh, Turkey for Turks uh, because they have a large Kurdish minority. Uh, then there are the Gulenists, which I'll talk about a little bit later in more detail. Uh, these are people affiliated with Fethullah Gulen uh, and uh, uh, he, this is a man who lives in Pennsylvania. He's, uh, his foundations are worth more than $10 billion. And uh, they encompass, uh, uh, they originally uh, were uh, set up as a series of religious schools covering from Turkey through Central Asia, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, probably Kazakhstan, uh, and so forth, uh, as well as in Turkey, uh, madrasa style schools. So it's very surprising that the uh, U.S. intelligence agencies are tolerating such a massive operation to occur. So there's obviously some sort of understanding between Fethullah Gulen and the CIA, the deep state, and our uh, military and our uh, uh, State Department. Then there's the AKP, the party of the current uh, president of Turkey, who uh, previously was the prime minister where the real power is held. Uh, Erdogan, which people is spelled Erdogan, um, and this party is somewhat uh, similar for American to think of in terms of the Republican Party, the conservatives, uh, religiously devout people. And there are other religious conservative parties and forces in Turkey. On the center, or the center left, however you want to put it, are the supporters of a secular Turkey, a Turkey with a division between church and state, between mosque and state. Uh, with uh, personal freedom for women's rights. So women in Turkey, uh, I was there not so long ago, uh, and uh, in uh, the villages, the women tend to uh, wear cover more often, and in the cities, you'll find women covered uh, wearing the hijab and also without the hijab. Uh, so it's certainly no requirement, uh, but it has gotten uh, more conservative and depends on where you're at. Uh, but the supporters of a secular uh, Turkey uh, draw their inspiration from the founder of their country after the fall of the Ottoman Empire after World War I, Kemal Ataturk, uh, who we see right over here. Um, and Ataturk uh, dispensed with the Orientalism of the Ottoman Empire, and uh, the Ottoman Empire had been looking to the West to modernize in many ways uh, for a long time. Uh, so introducing a proper army instead of the... the uh, uh, more complex systems the Ottoman Empire had, such as the Janissaries, which were uh, a core of uh, fighters that had been uh, drawn basically as adoptees from European Ottoman Empire uh, of Christian birth. Uh, 
and uh, they didn't universally convert, I don't believe, uh, to Islam either. Uh, but at any rate, <clears throat> uh, Ataturk uh, looked to Western science, logic, rational thought, uh, uh, and to, to help modernize uh, Turkey, which had suffered uh, the greatest disaster in, in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, 700 years perhaps, with the uh, way they were torn to pieces after World War I and parted out to the Allies. There's an excellent article by Robert Fisk about uh, the Turkish coup, although it has some defects, but to give you some background on that. And uh, the Ataturk uh, uh, revolution to found the modern Turkey uh, needed a vanguard to guarantee this massive social change. And so they had placed in the Constitution that the armed forces would act as a guardian of the Constitution, as in the case in some other countries as well. So uh, three or four times in the last 50 years, there have been military coups in Turkey. I think the last one was in around 1983, but I could be mistaken on that. <clears throat> uh, and um, uh, the army steps in when the civilian government deviates from, a, uh, for example, a division between a mosque and a state and, and appears to cross the line from the point of view of the armed forces. So <clears throat> then, of course, we have the Kurds, a big minority in uh, Turkey, and the Kurds uh, live uh, both in Turkey and in uh, Syria and in Iraq, in this area, around Diyarbakir, which is basically Kurdistan. And they were promised at the end of World War I by the Allies that they would be given a homeland, and it never occurred. Uh, so there is, thankfully now, a real recognized political party in Turkey of the Kurds uh, that is not outlawed and banned, but there is a fierce and terrible war going on in the southeast around Diyarbakir, and some people have told me that the ruin to some of the cities there is as bad as the ruin to Homs and Aleppo, or worse, which is impossible for, to believe. Uh, but apparently it's a much hotter war, and our disgusting press doesn't cover it at all. Uh, you know, in the old days, you'd have actual reporters going around. If you watch a Latin American uh, media, you'll see actually reporters walking around. I guess all the reporters are too scared now uh, due to our unwise foreign policy or the, the, some sort of uh, uh, malady that's come over American journalism so we don't get the footage very often with a reporter in the street. Um, so at any rate, there's the, uh, then there's a Kurdish, uh, the PKK, which is a Kurdish party, uh, a Kurdish uh, armed resistance, a revolutionary group, a, terrorist group. I don't like using the word terrorist for revolutionary group, um, and, but they are considered a terrorist organization by the U.S. Um, it's, uh, and the, uh, the, and the uh, Erdogan and the conservatives definitely want to wipe these people out. And this creates a problem uh, for the U.S. because the U.S. has uh, had the, some of the best success in Iraq uh, with the Kurds, in which they call the Peshmerga, up in the north of Iraq, uh, let's see if I can do this, uh, up in the very north, uh, around Mosul and Erbil, uh, and, um, and then the YPG, which is the Syrian uh, Kurdish resistance, which the U.S. has been using to both fight Assad and to fight ISIS, but they've basically just been defending their region with the expectation they're going to have an autonomy uh, once all the fighting is over. <clears throat> And uh, uh, so, as I mentioned about a year ago, the Russian plane was shot down over this area. And as a result, <clears throat> uh, Turkey's economy crashed because uh, Russia is a huge trading partner, especially for uh, uh, tourism, which is a huge part of the Turkish economy. Uh, and I was, as I said, in Turkey not so long ago, and I saw lots of Russians on the what they call the Turquoise Coast, which is a marvelous place, which I recommend you visit. Um, at any rate, um, so the U.S. is supporting the YPG, the Syrian equivalent, up on the northern border of Syria. Um, so this is important for establishing some of the tensions and motivations. So recently, about a week ago, roughly, uh, the Turkish president... Uh, or, I'm sorry, Turkish Prime Minister, which I think is named Yerdilim, uh, uh, 
uh, is a close ally of Erdogan. Uh, and uh, so I don't know if we're going to get any photos right in this article of that or not. Uh, there's Erdogan and there's uh, Yildirim. Uh, and um, uh, he uh, had indicated that they would, uh, he did in fact uh, repair relationships with Russia. Russia reinstated uh, trade after they apologized and said they were investigating the shooting of the Russian plane. They also went to Israel and uh, paid some sort of uh, blood uh, money for uh, uh, the, uh, uh, or had some sort of settlement with Israel about a, uh, a flotilla that tried to bring relief to Gaza that the Israelis stormed and killed about 10 Turkish citizens on. Uh, and so this all happened very recently. They were trying to improve uh, their ties in the neighborhood, so to speak, uh, because the economy was suffering a great deal. And Israel is another important potential trading partner and tourism partner for Turkey. There are direct flights to the turquoise coast from Tel Aviv nonstop. And there aren't very many direct nonstop flights from Tel Aviv to uh, Muslim or Arab states in the Middle East. So, then we get to Fethullah Gulen. Uh, and... Um, uh, he's a billionaire, uh, funding conservative religious madrasa-style schools all over Central Asia and Turkey. He also operates the largest charter school chain in the United States. Gulen's foundations are worth over $10 billion. Uh, it's an odd alliance, as I mentioned previously, for him to be based in the U.S. operating conservative Islamic religious schools all over the Middle East. Uh, my only uh, way to get my head around that is that we are actually getting some kind of intel out of this and that because these schools are in the former Soviet uh, republics, the U.S. is trying to basically uh, take all the territory that we were in contest with uh, Russia over during the Cold War after Russia fell. So Russia lost Kazakhstan and we're going to seek to drive a wedge between Russia and Kazakhstan. So. These religious schools can make it more difficult for Russia to exert influence in these areas. But that is indeed conjecture. Um, so, why was the coup so weak? Well, so in 2013, there were sort of show trials purging the, uh, the anti-religious secularists in the military because of the fear uh, of uh, uh, potential pro uh, coup if they essentially violated the Constitution in uh, giving this guy Erdogan more and more power. Now this guy is kind of popular with the uh, less educated people in Turkey in particular, but with, uh, because uh, he's been a strong uh, authoritarian leader and there's been tremendous economic growth in Turkey since he took over uh, 10 or uh, uh, 12 years ago, um, uh, maybe even longer, um, sometime around 2003. Um, so in 2013, uh, two things happened. Erdogan, I guess, felt powerful enough to, to conduct a purge of the military against the secular officers, and he also went after uh, Gulen as well. Uh, and started to close down their schools and businesses because they had become too powerful in the Turkish economy. He attacked his two main enemies and uh, uh, what became to be his enemies. Now, Gulen supposedly is against the uh, uh, Turkish uh, assistance to the uh, war against Assad in Syria. And you should look at the other stuff I've done before uh, on these types of subjects. Um, the uh, 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 the the uh, <clears throat> the fact is that uh, Turkey has been essentially had, well, okay. So a friend of mine from Turkey uh, told me that they had found tens of thousands of pages of documents that had been leaked from the Turkish police, showing thousands of ISIS members and their activities going in and out of Syria 
and uh, sleeper cells as well as active cells throughout Turkey, and it will appear that nothing has been uh, being done about this. So uh, the issue is that uh, Turkey has a proxy army in Syria, which is a Turkoman people, but they've also brought in... So the Turks actually spread to all of these other states, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, even in western China. These are Turkic peoples. Turkic people is a massive uh, group. Uh, uh, so um, the Turkoman is what the more uh, sort of the older uh, more ancient uh, remaining uh, Turks are in the uh, uh, like Turkmenistan and in northern Syria and in the Turkomans exist in uh, Turkey as well but this is a, a more ancient and more eastern group the, the original Turks that took over Turkey came in uh, long before the Turkoman who lived more in Central Asia and they came in later so uh, the Turks are funding the Turkoman and bringing in Turkomans from Central Asia, even from Western China, uh, to fight Assad in Syria. Uh, so this creates a conflict of interest for trying to fight ISIS uh, when ISIS and the uh, Turkomans are both fighting Assad. And all of these groups are religiously conservative, by and large. Uh, so uh, there isn't as much difference between ISIS and Erdogan uh, from the perspective of their religious beliefs than there are with Assad or with the secularists or uh, so so uh, this is a, a created a situation where Turkey has essentially aided and abetted ISIS although uh, they it's a very uneasy situation but uh, uh, so that's a whole subject unto itself so the, the, the coup, who conducted the coup? Well, the, the uh, Turks themselves have conducted sort of an informal poll, and about half of Turks think it was uh, Fethullah Gulen who has infiltrated the armed forces. So what I was trying to say is that in, in 2013, when they purged the armed forces, there were only about 275 people that were charged, and uh, there was sort of a rapprochement this year because those charges were thrown out. They were largely false. Uh, but what it allowed him to do at the same time was to uh, demote the uh, secular officers and then replace them with people uh, that uh, were loyal to him and were essentially uh, religious types who wouldn't s s uh, intervene if... Uh, uh, Erdogan moved Turkey to be less and less of a secular uh, democracy. Erdogan's also been quoted as saying democracy is a bus that you get off of when you get to your stop. So he doesn't have any strong commitment to democracy and he is now the most powerful ruler of Turkey since the Ottoman Empire, although I would think Ataturk certainly would qualify, Kamal Ataturk, the founder. Uh, so, uh, so at any rate, <clears throat> uh, they were, so, so the, the only possible rationalization if it was secularists would be that this purge had weakened them so badly that they botched this coup up so badly. And that's the main point I'm going to describe uh, before I get off the air for tonight. Um, so the pro-coup armed forces did several un-coup-like things. First, they began with a 9 p.m. arrest. Coups normally occur when everyone is sleeping at five in the morning. This is what my Turkish friend told me. Um, and uh, uh, so you should certainly think 3 a.m. maybe also, uh, if they don't stay up that late. Um, but supposedly, uh, the beans got spilled and everything had to be pushed up. So the coup didn't start at 5 a.m. or 3 a.m. So the timeline is roughly like this. So at 9 p.m., there was a, an arrest of one of the top military men, and he was almost strangled to death with a belt, which is interesting because that's the old Ottoman technique was strangulation. Um, they would strangle all the brothers of the king when a new when the king died and, and one of the sons uh, became king. Unfortunately, this is one of the things that really weakened the Ottoman Empire is he would kill off all the other uh, rivals to the throne. Uh, so at any rate, um, uh, that's how it began at 9 p.m. And uh, the question I have is, how do we know that the beans were spilled? 
Uh, so then the next uh, thing we know on the timeline that I'm going to mention is at 11 p.m., two bridges separating European Istanbul from Asian Istanbul were closed. Uh, so let's see if I can do this here. Uh, over here and out. Oh. And here and out. Okay, well, you can see here that uh, this is the uh, Marmara Denisi, I think is what it's called. And let's see if I can get it in a little bit closer. And so here in Istanbul, the straits were closed. And at two points, uh, the two main bridges. Uh, so um, that would clearly tell anybody who uh, was on the Erdogan side that a coup had begun. So we know at 11 p.m. they definitely knew, and it, wasn't sh it was shortly after that the president went on and said that there was a unsuccessful coup occurring. So then at 11.47 p.m., 47 minutes after these bridges are reported closed, Erdogan flies away from his hotel in Marmaris, his ho vacation resort. So let's roll out a little bit here. See if I can find Marmaris for you. All right. Okay, there's Bodrum. So we should have Marmaris right around here. So there it is. Marmaris is down here. Um, so he leaves at 11.47 p.m. Um, and there's a bunch of other stuff going on. At 12.23 a.m., he begins transmitting messages. At 1 a.m., he gives an interview from his iPhone while he's circling Istanbul uh, with Turk CNN. At 1.13 a.m., tanks can be heard firing inside the airport. By 2.40 a.m., the, the coup has been broken at the airport uh, because of the mass flood of civilians into the street. So people are saying these civilians are completely unarmed. They're quite heroic. But actually, I had reports that they were armed uh, with knives and guns. And photos show that. And this was um, uh, something Sybil Edmonds said. And I, so I wanted to know there are plenty of sh pictures of uh, protesters that are armed. They were not all uh, unarmed. Uh, so uh, at any rate, <clears throat> so getting back to the timeline, um, at 2.40, he actually arrives in Istanbul airport. At 3.08 a.m., uh, there are reports of bombing by helicopters of the Turkish parliament, and this killed a lot of people, um, about 80 people, I believe. And then at 4 a.m. is when the attack on his hotel in Marmaris occurs. So the first problem we described is that these coups don't occur early in the evening, and Turks have a vibrant uh, night culture, so it's not like, a, uh, you know... Uh, Topeka, Kansas at 9 p.m. in Istanbul. Um, things are going on till late at night. Uh, so, uh, uh, so at any rate, the second uh, problem here, and all the other coups occurred later, so the excuse is that it had to be pushed up. The second problem is the attack on the hotel in Marmaris. Why would it occur at 4 a.m. when the whole world knows for hours that he is left and the transponders were left on on his plane so it could be tracked on a public internet applications where he was that he had left at 11.47 p.m. from uh, Marmaris. Uh, so why wouldn't the coup plotters, as the very first thing, would be to seize Erdogan? Um, so, you know, this is, would be the worst service to secularists ever to do something this stupid. Now, the Turks, as I said, when they were polled, 50% thought it was the Gulen people, which are religious conservatives that are opposed to Erdogan, the, uh, the sultan, practically, the, currently the president of Turkey, uh, the leader of the AKP party, this majority, uh, largest, most powerful party in Turkey, and the, a very conservative party. Uh, and um, uh, so to not arrest him makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, the plane is being tracked online, and then two F-16s locked their radar on the two F-16s that were accompanying his jet. They could have easily shot him down, and they didn't. They didn't force him to land, and they didn't shoot him down. Um, so this 
terrible disservice to any uh, thought of uh, stepping into the situation. Uh, it leads me to the second point, which is that 35% of Turks thinks it was Erdogan himself doing a false flag attack uh, to give him an excuse to purge the Gulenists and the army. So recently there was a ruling where all these uh, old uh, con uh, uh, convictions of officers, which is a terrible thing, they used fraud, they used fonts in these convictions that hadn't even been created in 2003 as part of their evidence because trials 10 years later, so they fraudulently created documents. They stripped the officers of the rights to their own children on fraudulent charges as well as jailing them. It's been very harsh and the treatment of the coup uh, people, if you see the photos, is uh, quite shocking. Uh, uh, I mean, it hasn't been, I mean, there was uh, lynchings of soldiers and so forth. Um, so that's the second big problem we have. Um, and the question is, what is the significance that the president uh, changed their foreign policy to be less aligned with Washington and London, with the Western consensus, and with the Gulf Petro monarchies, both? None of them wanted them to reconcile with Russia. None of them wanted to reconcile with Assad. And in fact, that just a day or two before the coup, this president, uh, and forgive me if I massacre his name, yielded him. Uh, he uh, said, no, we're not going to uh, make a deal with Assad. So it's gone back and forth. Uh, but the coup occurred shortly after a change in their foreign policy to make it less aligned towards the conservative Saudis, less aligned towards the NATO axis, so to speak. Um, so we need to find out who really was involved in this coup to be able to profile now, the, what do the Turks think in their polls? Well, the third possible group that the Turks consider uh, would be at 10%, some small faction of the army, and then at 5%, the CIA. Uh, in other words, uh, some kind of a Western intelligence-backed coup. And most military coups in the last 60 years have been uh, from the CIA uh, or uh, their British or French uh, corollaries. <clears throat> so I gave you the background on some of the facts leading up to the coup about the foreign policy change that uh, recently there had been a burying the hatchet by throwing out these charges against these officers. So to me the big questions are why did the coup start at 9 p.m. and how did the beans get spilled? How, what is our proof that that happened? This might just be AKP disinformation people online saying that the beans got spilled. I don't know. No one will answer me yet. Um, the second is uh, many would ask why Erdogan wasn't immediately seized and why was he, uh, how could they be so incompetent as to attack a hotel he had left four hours and 15 minutes earlier. Now, this makes him look like a great hero that his hotel was attacked, that makes his, but his life was never in danger, and he acted like his life was never in danger. In previous situations, he looked shaken. He looked completely self-assured the whole time. And I'm repeating uh, what I heard from my uh, Turkish uh, contact who follows these things quite closely. Um, as well as my own analysis of the matter. So were the coup plotters betrayed? Uh, uh, was it possible that the coup was, uh, that these guys who were supposed to attack this hotel was the whole linchpin of the thing and that they should have uh, gone in first, meaning they shouldn't have closed the bridges in Istanbul at 11? The other issue is that the soldiers were told that they were going on a drill. You would think that uh, the soldiers would be advised of the coup. Uh, this has never happened before. So you have this uh, soldiers that had, were unprepared to deal with uh, the uh, civilians that they encountered. And you would think that you would simply post highly loyal units at the rear of each of these uh, uh, army uh, groups uh, uh, platoons or whatnot, uh, companies, uh, to mow them down if they didn't do what you wanted if you've got the problem where you have a civil war inside the army as well. So these are the actual facts we have to work with. Um, 
and more will be uh, uh, revealed. But I, I haven't been very comfortable with what I've seen in the media, so I hope this was of some use to you. My name is Alexander Hagen. Good night and good luck.